Welcome back to our channel. Today, we're diving into the process of measuring S parameters for a 90-degree hybrid coupler, a fundamental component in RF systems. By the end of this video, you'll have a solid understanding of how to measure and interpret these parameters for your own RF projects. Let's get started. Right here, we have our 90-degree coupler, which features for ports to input ports and to output ports. We'll be walking through each step to ensure accurate and reliable measurements using a vector network and LISER to capture the S parameters and analyze the performance. To start the measurement process, we first need to turn on the network and begin calibration. You can see the model of the network and LISER we're using here. This model of VNA can cover frequencies up to 30 to gigahertz. If you're interested in learning about detailed calibration, you can subscribe to our channel and watch our instructional video on calibrating the device. However, since calibration is critical in the measurement process with a network and LISER, we'll start by quickly calibrating here. This analyzer can operate in three different modes. Click on the mode option. We have the CAD, network analyzer, and spectrum analyzer modes. We want to use the network analyzer mode, so select this option. The next step is to choose the frequency range. Press the frequency button, and here we can specify the start and stop frequencies. Our coupler operates in the frequency range of 1700 to 2700 megahertz. So, we'll set the device's working range from 1 to 3 gigahertz. Therefore, we'll set 1 gigahertz as the start frequency and 3 gigahertz as the end frequency. Now we can start calibrating the device, select the calibration option, and for this device, choose the mechanical full option for calibration. Here we specify the type of calibration, we'll use the full to port option, then press select. In this part, we configure the device under test. The connector used for this device is to 0.9 to millimeters, so select it and then proceed to set up connector 2 with the same configuration as port 1. To perform the calibration, we need a kit, and you can see the kit specifications on the case. Select the second option for ports 1 and 2 and press Finish. We will use this kit for calibration. As you can see, this kit includes an open port, a short port, a load port, and two through ports. Now, press the button to start the calibration. Follow the instructions on the device screen to complete the calibration. Connect port 1 to the kit's open port and press measure.
Then connect port 1 to the kit short port and press measure again. Next, connect port 1 to the kit's load port and press measure. Repeat the same process for port 2 by connecting it to the kit's open, short, and load ports in sequence and pressing measure each time. Finally, connect ports 1 and 2 of the device to the kits through ports and press measure. Now that calibration is successfully completed, everything is set for measuring the coupler. As I mentioned initially, this coupler has four ports. Input ports 1 and 4 and output ports 2 and 3. Therefore, these are its to output ports and these are its to input ports. Also, you can see the operating frequency of this structure here. Since our network and lyser has only two ports, we need two matched loads to measure the S parameters of this four-port component. This is a 50-ohm matched load that can cover frequencies from DC to 40 gigahertz. First, we'll connect two matched loads to the coupler's outputs and measure the parameters of port 1 and port 4. Now, connect port 1 of the network and lyser to input port 1 of the coupler and port 2 of the network to input port 4 of the coupler. Here, you can see the S11 parameter of the coupler. By clicking the S to 1 button, we can observe the isolation between the input ports of the coupler, showing the isolation between ports 1 and 4. By clicking S to 2, we can observe the return loss of the other input port of the coupler. All these S parameters can be displayed in other units as needed. Simply click on Format, by default, the logarithmic value is shown. Here, we can see the VSWR value. By selecting this option, the S parameters of the coupler's input ports will be displayed based on VSWR. By clicking on Scale, we can adjust the scale to make the VSWR values more prominent. You'll notice that the VSWR for coupler port 1 is less than 1.5. To view the VSWR for the other coupler port, exit this page and click Measure. Here, 
we can view the VSWR for the next port, which is also well below 1.5. Clicking Format again returns the value to logarithmic display. Now, we'll measure the insertion loss for output port 2 of the coupler when port 1 is active. For this, disconnect the matched load from port 2 and connect the network analyzer to it. First, disconnect the network connector from port 4 of the coupler. Remove the matched load, connect the matched load in place of the connector. Connect the network and lyser to output port 2 of the coupler. Here, S11 represents the return loss at port 1. While S21 shows the power passing from port 1 to port 2 of the coupler. The insertion loss in the state is about minus 3 decibels. By selecting scale, we can get a clearer view of the insertion value. Insertion loss is about minus 3 decibels. By pressing Measure button, go back to the S parameters. By clicking Format, we can measure the phase as well. Just click on Phase and you'll see that the phase of S to 1 is now measured. It shows the phase between these two ports. By selecting Scale, we can get a better view of this value. The next measurement step is to measure the insertion loss and output phase between ports 1 and 3 of coupler then compare it with the phase of S to 1. To compare, we first need to save the S to 1 results. To do this, click on Trace, select Math and Memory, enable Data Mem, and then click Data and Memory. The S to 1 results are now stored on the screen, and by disconnecting the connector from port 2, these results will remain displayed on the device. Now, we'll revert the settings. Next, we'll measure the parameters of coupler port 3. As you can see on the network display screen, by disconnecting the connector, the previously saved results are still present on the screen. Now connect the matched load to the coupler's output port 2 and connect the connector to port 3 of the device. As displayed on the screen, the device is measuring the phase of S31, while the phase of S21 is also displayed on the screen. By clicking Measure, we can view the measured phase values in degree. By clicking Format again, you can also view the logarithmic values of S21 and S31 are about minus 3 decibels across the entire bandwidth, indicating that the input power at coupler port 1 is evenly divided between the coupler's output ports. Here, the phase difference between this point and this point is 90 degrees. To see the phase difference between S21 and S31, we can use the marker option. We can place the marker at our desired point. At this frequency point, the phase is around minus 179 degrees. Click to activate marker number 2. We'll use marker number 2 to display the stored S21 data.
Click More, then select Memory under Marker Trace. Click on Back button. Now select Normal to display the marker at the desired point. The difference between the two markers at these corresponding points shows the phase difference between coupler output ports 2 and 3. To view this difference, simply click on Table, and you'll see that there is approximately a 90 degree phase difference between output ports 2 and 3. Thus, the measurement results indicate that when coupler port 1 is excited, the input signal divides between ports 2 and 3 with a phase difference of 90 degrees. That wraps up our detailed process of measuring the S parameters of a 90 degree hybrid coupler. We walked through the calibration, setup, and measurement steps to capture key parameters like return loss, insertion loss, isolation, and the critical 90 degree phase difference between output ports. As you saw, these measurements confirm that when one input port is active, the signal splits evenly between the output ports with the expected phase shift, making this coupler a valuable component in microwave systems. If you found this tutorial helpful, please give it a like and subscribe for more in-depth RF measurement and design videos. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for our next session on network analyzer techniques and component testing.